Hi, I'm Jamie from Lash Base, and thank you for choosing to watch my presentation here at the first and potentially the last virtual Lash Conference. Just quickly, the reason why I say the, uh, hopefully the last Lash Conference is because next year, just maybe, we might be able to do this in person. Right. Let me give you a bit of a backstory. So I am Head of Marketing um, at a very popular band in the UK called Lash Base, and I have a lot of experience in marketing, social media marketing, a lot of digital um, and also offline stuff too. And I know what it takes to be successful with marketing. Now, the thing is, if you are watching this, then you're likely to be one of the following three. You're either a lash artist, a lash trainer, or you are running a lash brand. And if that is the case, then you don't have the luxury that I have of having it as a full-time position in which I can create content, plan content, and just build a social media presence as a full-time job. You are somebody that only has a very short space of time. So it's never fun when people are trying to give you advice on how you should market your business and these ideas and things that you should do would take up more time than you have in the day because if you're a lash artist, you've got two tweezers in your hand most of the time and you are going to be spending it focusing on what you're doing, not sitting there with your phone in your hand. So what I've decided to do, that's the problem, and I think I've come up with a solution. Through my experience, I now can give you um, enough work to do that will only cover one hour of your day, sometimes not even that, um, and you'll be able to have a successful business. Right, let's get started. So the first question that I want to cover is why one hour? Why, why does it have to be one hour? Why couldn't it be no time at all? Why can't I just be good at lashes? and that be enough for me to have a successful business. Now, as much as I would love that to be the case, unfortunately, the way of the world, it just doesn't work like that. So, and I hate to say this, you could be an average lash artist, but good at marketing, and you'll be more successful than somebody that is a brilliant lash artist and not very good at marketing. So that's the problem, and this is why you need to understand that marketing your business is very important, even in that short space of time. So the reason why I've said an hour, and some people might say, but I'm fully booked, I don't have an hour to spend. So when I finish my day's lashing, I then have to go home and, and do my other, live my life, live my personal life. Now, firstly, if that's true, if you're fully booked, and then you get to go home and enjoy your personal life, then you don't need to be watching this necessarily, because whatever you're doing, is clearly successful. However, who I'm speaking to are the ones that have a few um, spaces in their diary, or they want to get a, a bit busier, or even they might be fully booked, but they're looking to take people on so that they can have more clients coming in. Um, and therefore there is that time that's available. So the reason why I'm talking about how important the time is, is because the first point I need to make to you is that you must make time for your marketing. It should not be an afterthought. So there's no way no way that you should just do a full day's lashing, get home, like have, have some food, and then sit there and think, oh right, I need to post on social media, I should just quickly post something, because that's almost the same as doing nothing. And therefore you have wasted your time and you'll feel like you're doing more than you should be anyway. So I think the first point that you need to really, really, really understand is that you must make time. There's something that I say that sounds quite extreme and uh, I truly believe in it, and that is, that you should block out one client's worth of time to focus on your marketing. Whether that's research, whether that's strategizing, planning, scheduling, um, which I'll come on to in a bit, um, or whether that's just editing some of the stuff that you have done. That moment and those that hour of your time is gonna be key to the success of your business. So point number one has got to be you need to take marketing seriously and you need to make sure and treat it at the same way that you treat an appointment with your client, schedule it in and keep to it. Right, so now we've got our one hour slot. The rest of this presentation is gonna be talking about what you can do with that one hour slot. So the first thing I'm gonna do is talk about something that is vitally important and it's one of the biggest mistakes that um, lash artists use on social media nowadays anyway. It's something I see every single day. Now, you need to understand your target audience. So you're using social media, you're posting up your work, you're putting your availability, you're showing the salon behind the scenes, you've got lots of things, you're creating lots of content, but you're just not getting the people inquiring. The reason why a lot of lash artists fail is because they focus on trying to impress other lash artists. They focus on 
commenting and engaging with other lash artists, most often halfway around the world, halfway across the country. Now, while the recognition from other lash artists uh, is great, having conversations with people that understand what you do is also great, um, and networking is always a good thing because you don't know what opportunities could arise from that. So that being said, if you're a lash artist and your core way of earning money is clients coming through your door to have lashes done and give you money, then your social media efforts need to be focused towards them. There is no point if uh, some lash artist from a thousand miles away comments and says, these lashes are amazing. That's not gonna help you. What you want is people in the local area near to you saying these are amazing or tagging one of their friends locally rather than other lash artists tagging other lash artists to say about it. So task number one, I'm gonna set a task now. You can do this whenever you want. You don't have to do this whilst I'm talking, but this is about finding the, your target audience or the persona of your target target audience. It's something we do um, at Lash Base here uh, because you can't be the right lash artist for everyone. It doesn't work like that. You cannot just go, right, I'm gonna cast my net out and everyone's gonna to come to me for lashes. It doesn't work like that. If you want good customer loyalty or client loyalty, sorry, if you want to attract the right people, then you're going to have to make it a little more niche and focus on who you are and who is in the local area specifically. Like, So if you are a lash artist and there's a big college or university that's near you and you know that all around the area are just students, then if you want to get a lot of clients in, you may have to then focus towards those types. Where, whereas you might be in a more affluent area, a location in which people ha are slightly older, they might have more disposable income, they might be looking for luxury rather than just like quick, big and gone. Uh, so therefore you need to focus your marketing on those efforts. Talking about styles, if you understand your local area and they are, there's a lot of older people, they may not want the massive mega volume style looks that you see and you engage with all over social media. They might look for something that's a little more natural and therefore you should really be thinking about that when you're posting on social media. So the first task is, is understanding the, the ideal persona for you. So what you want to do is get a piece of paper or your notes on your phone um, and write down your ideal um, or the local area or your ideal clients um, age, where they live, what they do for a living, um, what styles do they like, um, how much do they earn, what are they interested in, what impresses them, um, and use, once you've written all these things down, you can actually just Google like persona um, task and you'll find it. We, we used it at Lashbase to try and find out and, and figure out who our customers were, our ideal customers or the most likely people to be our customers based on our products, and you can do the same as a lash artist. Uh, it really does help because what you'll find is everyone's going to be different, but you might go, right, I've just realised in my area, everybody is a professional at between 30 and 40 years old. Uh, they uh, have weekends, mainly weekends free because they work all day. Um, and therefore, when you start writing all these things down and you see that, you then can try and it helps you with what you want to be posting on social media, because what would attract someone like that? Uh, rather than just posting up everything and anything, hoping that another lash artist is going to give you some like kudos for the type of work that you've done. And it also means that once you know who that type, who that person is and you understand that you don't need to be focusing on lash artists all over the world, with that very short amount of time that you do have, you can focus on your like engagement efforts towards the local area and to people that are actually or more potentially going to be giving you money for business and for services. So hopefully that has helped with point one. I'm going to move on to number two, and that is now that you understand who you're trying to target, you understand you don't have the time, no one else has time too. So that means when they land on your social media accounts, it needs to be very clear and very easy how people can get hold of you. So I'm going to talk about setting up your bio, more specifically on Instagram, because as we know that at the moment, that is going to be where most people focus their efforts for social media. It's where a lot of people spend a lot of their time when they're also your, so your clients are going to spend a lot of time just browsing through social media. If they see you and if they come to your account, it needs to be vital, like it's vital that it is so clear 
what you do, where you are, and how they can get in touch with you. So for setting up your bio, very simple, make sure that you have your uh, location set on there because if, if the amount of people you click onto their accounts and you can't see that they're local to you, straight away that person could just move off, move away. So make sure your location is there, make sure the easiest way to get in touch with you is there. Um, and top tip here is make sure you put your name in your bio as well. So you may have like a company or a salon name um, when they land on it. If you are like a one man lash up, one person lash uh, brand or salon, then you do want to have your name in there. So it builds that connection and that trust straight away. So they can see what your name is. They can see where you are. They can see how they can get hold of you straight away. So as long as you focus on that, it's uh, don't overthink your bio. Keep it easy, short but just make sure the key information is there. Moving on now. So I want to mention the platforms that you should be using as a lash artist in 2020 and 2021, most likely, uh, rather than like, I've always been a believer and lash base uh, in the UK, we are like this. We use and we are fairly active on every single social media platform that you could possibly think of. We try and get involved in all of it. Um, and whilst that is the best, because you never know which one's going to take off, and if you're already uh, well practiced and involved in those social media platforms, then you've got a better chance of uh, doing well as an early starter. However, as a lash artist or a lash trainer um, in today's environment when you don't have enough time, uh, I honestly would not worry about trying to spread yourself too thin. Uh, a good thing that you can do if you do want to use multiple platforms is to cross post. So you can have a video of lashes that are suitable for things like Instagram Reels and for TikTok or for on Facebook. Uh, or if you want to post, cut it slowly and post it onto Twitter, you can use that and you can be active on more. But I think something that you need to focus on really is which platforms are your is your target audience on so really you're going to be talking about instagram and you've most likely um, i'd say still especially if you've got older clients you're going to be talking about facebook as well so i'm just going to give you a little bit of advice on how or what to use for those two platforms right now but if you look into your target audience you might see that it's a younger audience therefore you might want to focus on tiktok maybe maybe not just yet so let's talk about instagram with instagram then it's getting very, very, very busy, isn't it? So you've probably noticed that your organic reach is non-existent. You post something, hardly anyone sees it. That's the same for everybody. Uh, it's just the way of the world. There's loads of people that are on Instagram every single day. There's only so much room in a feed. They've now got uh, all the different features. What, you've got reels now, stories, your feed posts. Uh, there's there's all the shopping now that you can do on Instagram as well. And they're bringing more and more out all the time. They're just trying to keep up with everybody else and be everything to everyone. So because of that, it's not like a few years ago, you'd post a just a post and that would be it. Done. That's your social media on Instagram done. Now you need to have a focus on, like I've just said, on Instagram stories, on reels, on your feed posts. So with Instagram, the things that I would focus on specifically right now for you as a lash artist is to continue posting your normal type pictures of your lashes um, and uh, other standard feed posts. That's got to be, it's a given. They won't reach everybody, but they're always there for when a client lands onto your account and they're having a look through. A great way to get good reach at the moment is using Instagram Reels. So if you could watch this video that I'm doing, this presentation right now, and at any moment, whatever happens to be the new feature that the Instagram or whatever social media platform it is you're using, whatever the new feature is, that's the one that they want you to use. So that's the one that gets rewarded with a better reach. So really, right now, you're watching this in the middle of November, then you need to be using Instagram Reels. And that doesn't mean that you need to be making, be some hilarious comedian that's just on camera all the time. Doesn't mean that. Simply, you can switch up a video of your client's lashes and put some music to it if you're not on a business account, that is. But you can create a time-lapsed video for Reels that goes on and shows off your work. There's a lot you can do, but my first advice when talking about using Instagram and the platforms you should be using, 
get involved with Instagram Reels, try it, see how well you do. You've got to use it. It's going to be around for a little bit longer. Um, it seems to be getting more and more popular. So yeah, give it a good go. Next thing is your Instagram stories. Now, this is something that I've said before, and it's just the case, it's just the truth. You don't need to overthink Instagram stories. It's a perfect place for you to be able to just post behind the scenes of what you're up to. In today's environment and something that works really well, we've seen when from speaking to a lot of lash artists, uh, clients are concerned for health and safety at the moment because of COVID. So Instagram stories that are showing how clean and safe your environment that you lash in is always, always, always goes down well. So don't overthink it. If you just want to show uh, what you do in between clients by cleaning and spraying and wiping and any of that, you'd be surprised as to how well that, how far that goes, sorry, in building that trust with somebody that's potentially interested in booking in with you. So use Instagram stories frequently, but don't overthink them. Use Reels as much as you can and understand that you may not be the best at it, but over time you'll only improve and you can only improve if you actually do it. So get out of your comfort zone, use Instagram Reels, use Instagram Stories frequently without thinking, um, and then focus on feed posts every now and again. So Instagram and then moving on to Facebook. <sighs> Facebook, what can I say about that? There's a lot of people that still don't like, don't like it, don't use it. Um, but lots of people do. And if your audience or your clients do, then you're gonna have to too. It's not a case of you under thinking, oh, I don't like using it. But if you've got potential clients that are using Facebook, so do you. Something that we've seen brilliant success with, and the one thing I wanna talk about with Facebook is the, um, the use of Facebook groups. Now, let's just say you've got a client list at the moment, you've got 30 clients on your books, if you were to put them all into a Facebook group, that, that is then um, 30 people that you can post about last minute appointments, you can post about your promotions and deals without coming across too like spam, uh, spammy to, if you put that out in the public that you're doing a deal, um, you can look spammy to new people. Whereas if you've got a Facebook group of people that are already your clients, at least then you can just show them the deals, talk about re refer a friend schemes and things that you've got going on. So Facebook groups, uh, something that you will have, I believe, massive success with is if you set up a group, get all your clients in there and use that as a way of messaging and talking to all clients and offering up late availability um, and even pushing things like your refer a friend scheme as well. So as a lash artist, just to recap on that, for me, yes, using everything is great. However, you're probably with only an hour a day, you're probably going to need to focus and narrow it down a little bit. And right now, for me, that would be Instagram and Facebook. But I hear what a lot of people are saying through the screen right now, and that is, but that's still an awful lot of work. How do I like squeeze in the time for doing that? And do you wanna know the secret to what people that are very active on social media, like how they do it? It's called batch work. And that's the next part that I wanna to talk to you about and the importance of batch work. You've probably heard it before and you probably think it's a good idea, but there's hearing a good idea and then implementing that idea, uh, that's the part. So for those that don't know batch work, that is when you have a scheduled time, uh, length of time, time frame, let's say, uh, that you do and create all of your social media work for a period of time. This just means that throughout the rest of the week, let's say you do three days worth of posts, like you sit and you spend one of your hours, one day, you do three days worth of posts and videos and reels and things that you're gonna upload onto social media. It just means that the next few days, you only need to spend five minutes because then you can, you've, it's already done. So this is massively successful and anybody that has an active social media account with a big following, and also runs other uh, runs a business as well. This is what they do. It just has to be done this way. So it's, uh, I must admit, I struggle because I'm a very reactive marketer. So there'll be times when I like to just go with the information I have on that day, create something for that day. Now, the good thing is you can still behave like that. However, if you know you've always got that that back that backup of several posts that you can do there's always going to come a time when you just won't have time to think you won't have time to create you won't have time to do any of it however you'll have that backlog that you can then just upload and it keeps you active and then people will ask you how do you manage to stay so active on social media 
That's because if you have listened to what I said at the beginning of this, book out that time and then spend that time and create content. You can edit all your pictures, all of the work that you've got, make little videos, make reels, save it in your drafts. You don't have to make them and post them, just save them. You can actually create up to a week's worth of Instagram or Facebook posts, whatever, whatever social media posts, you can create a week's worth in that short space of time if you actually focus on it and have that moment to do it. So if you wanna do batch work and you wanna create all of these posts, uh, a lot of the time you're then gonna need two things, two different platforms that I'm gonna talk about now. And that is, one, you're gonna need to have apps that you can use that make things look better or to help you make things look better. And number two, you're gonna need a way of being able to potentially schedule these posts so that they go out, you don't even need to think about it. So that's what I wanna to talk to you about. Just give you like a list of apps that you can download if you don't know about them already, um, why they're good and what you can do with them. So that's where I'm gonna go next. So I'm just gonna move over so I can just like add in the list next to me here. So right, two seconds. Ta-da! <laughs> right, so I think I've moved over. Do you like that editing by the way? Like, So here I am, head of marketing at a massive lash brand and that is the quality of my marketing. In fact, no, I, I do wanna tell you one thing. Because uh, a question or a comment that I get quite a lot is, yeah, but it's all right for you because you've got all the cameras and the software and the, you can do, edit this and change this. I'm filming this right now on my phone and I'm going to tell you the apps that I've used to do some of the work that I've done. Don't get me wrong. Yes, we do have proper cameras. Yes, we do edit things um, using the proper software. I don't personally, I've staff that do obviously, but yeah, you do not need to make it extra fancy. You do not need to waste loads of money on the right equipment. You just need to do it. And, and this is what I'm just about to tell you. So as I've made this space right here now, um, I'm gonna tell you these apps you. This is actually doing this now. This is good. This is how and good practice for um, when you're making Instagram Reels or if you wanna make TikToks, because you've got to pretend to text there. Look, I'm gonna make text come up now and make a, hello, my name is Jamie. <laughs> anyway, right, so get rid of that. We're gonna talk through the apps that you can use firstly to make things look good. I'm gonna list them all right there like that they these are the apps and i'll talk through them one by one uh, with what you can do with them so firstly we're going to talk about canva you may have heard about canva before uh, it's very simple it's free as well there is a paid version but you can do the free version this is just a great way that you can create um frames for your work or you can create those posts that are like quotes so if you ever want to post up reviews that people have done which by the way is a top tip there um, when people land, potential clients land on your account, things that they want to see are things like reviews about what other people have said um, and obviously pictures of work and all the extra bits. So your, your uh, bio already looks nice and clear. They know where you are. They know your, your name. They know your local. All of a sudden they see a post that is a review of someone saying how happy they are with the work that you've done. You can make these types of posts on Canva. Really easy, canva.com, um, and then just start playing around. It's literally drag and drop. There's loads of options, loads of choice. Definitely use it. Next one I'm gonna talk to you about is one called Over, number two. So I'll use this as well for a little bit. Uh, this one is, they have a free version, but the free one doesn't give you that many options. The paid version um, is fairly cheap. Uh, it's like Canva, but maybe just a little bit better. It's got a bit more, it's a bit more professional. So yeah, if you take the step from Canva, you can move to Over. Next up on the list is Mojo. Mojo is great for making brilliant looking Instagram stories. You can make Instagram stories that look like proper professional uh, class things. Just, it's, it can be free or you can do the paid version as well. So yeah, take a look at Mojo for Instagram stories. Editing videos, like much like this one, you can use an app called InShot. So if you're making uh, your lash videos you've been filming and you wanna do like the start, the middle, the end, just to make a nice video, you, I recommend using InShot. It's really easy to use, it's drag and drop again. All of these things can be done for free and on your phone. 
and you can make something that looks pretty decent and when you get used to how it works your quality of the work will only get better as well so yeah i definitely recommend that um, and then number five in apps to help you make things look better at the bottom here, as you can see, is Facetune. There's a lot of apps similar, but this is just so you can get rid of like the redness of the eyes. You can um, maybe remove some blemishes of skin. Obviously, whatever you do, do not edit the lashes themselves. Don't cheat like that, please. But you can use um, Facetune to get rid of slight red eyes and uh, move the um, blemishes away so that the focus is on your lash work instead. And again, there's free versions, there's paid versions, but all of these things can be done for free or cheap and they will just completely transform the quality of your social media work. So I would 100% use those. So they're the ones that help you with uh, making everything look good, making it easy, honestly, it's so easy. The next thing I'm gonna talk, to, talk about are planning and scheduling apps. So here are the three that I'm gonna put here um, and the ones that we've used at Lashbase and that is Hootsuite, Planoli, I think it's pronounced Planoli, Planoli and Buffer. So they all do very similar things. This is so you can feel free to have a look at all of the websites or the Planolis like the one that you might wanna use for Instagram because it's an app. Um, and you can just like schedule and plan all of your posts that you're gonna do or down to the point that you literally won't even need to press that post button when it comes to it. It will just go out there and be posted. Even if you're mid lashes, it will go out if you set it. Because the good thing is you'll look at your Instagram insights. You'll see that your target audience is most active, let's just say at 5 p.m. on a Wednesday. But if you happen to be lashing at that time and you still want a post to go out, then these apps will really help you. So definitely look into all of these apps as well. So that's the end of my app um, recommendations. So I'm gonna get back into the middle quickly. There we go. <laughs> right, so I've just talked to you about those scheduling apps anyway. Uh, I like them, I do use them. However, there is one thing that you do need to be wary of, and this is gonna move me onto a piece of advice and a tip which works really, really well for you. One of the things that social media, all social media platforms want is real engagement and relationship building. And if you're scheduling posts and you're not there to respond to questions and comments that come quite soon after posting, then that can have a negative impact on things. So yes, it, whilst it's great to schedule in posts, sometimes it's good to be to finish or create the work so you've got that batch work ready, but for you to actually be the one to press that button so you know it's gone live at a certain time. Now, what's the saying? The saying is, don't post and ghost. You might have heard that one before. Um, it's a, basically, don't post something and then just disappear off your phone and not respond to anybody that's engaging with it. So what we do at Lashbase, again, we have had success. I'm only speaking from experience with these tips. Uh, it's a stupid name that we've it's not actually the name we've given it is a 10 post 10 strategy so what we do if we've got a piece of content that we want to post on social media and i'd recommend the same to you as well because it doesn't take much time 10 minutes before you post on social media engage with the local area so engage with your target audience so for us we would be engaging with lash artists before we post something 10 minutes before you post something go on to instagram click on the little magnifying spyglass thing then search places and then your local area and then start commenting for 10 minutes on posts, all sorts of posts, just likes and comments and emojis, whatever you want, and then post your post. That's then, after you've done that, spend 10 minutes doing the same thing again. What this will do will actually increase the amount of people that come to your account and engage with your posts, which then means it's gonna reach more people organically. Now don't, um, this isn't like a magic, thing that's gonna mean you're gonna reach millions of people. However, if you do it, it's a lot better than if you don't do it. So just for that short 20 minute piece of time on your phone, instead of sitting there scrolling through and just going through stuff you're, you're not, that won't benefit you, engage with your audience, your target audience, post, and then engage with your target audience again. So in that 20 minute slot, and you'll have a massive, massive increase in engagement yourself which will increase in followers, which will increase in your likes and comments. More importantly, it will increase the amount of inquiries you get 
for lash appointments. Right, so we are coming towards the end of this presentation and I think the next thing on my list needs to be straight up just telling you types of posts that you can post and um, so you don't need to overthink it. Uh, again, one of the key things that always run through all of my advice that I give and when I speak with anyone, some of the, like, the point that causes the most problems for people is the overthinking of things. Like they overthink what others will think. They overthink if their, po if their work's good enough, so why should they post it? They overthink um, what they should post. They overthink just everything. And, and what that can do is seriously negatively impact your work, your business, your, your social media marketing. So uh, I know this not necessarily a, a tip or piece of advice, I guess, but but please stop overthinking things. Really stop overthinking it. So uh, what I just want to do is tell you that things to post on social media, just straight up things to post. So right now, post showing how clean and safe you are on social media. You have to do that right now. That's relevant, it's important, it does work. You should also post about and videos of, whether that's in reels, on your feed or in stories, your environment that you lash in, your lash room, salon, whatever it is, people need to see that to be able to trust and then commit to you. Um, think of it this way. If I said to you, walk down a street that you've never been down before, go and pick at any of those doors at random, knock on it, and then just walk straight in and start talking to that person that's there. You, it would be a horrible experience, wouldn't it? You wouldn't know who was going to be in there. You wouldn't know um, what it was going to look like, how they were going to react. You wouldn't know anything. It, you just wouldn't do it. However, if you knew and had seen the person that lived there, if you knew what the inside of the house looked like, if you knew who they were as a person, that essentially you're saying are you going to go knock on your friend's door you would go and do that and that's exactly the same for these potential clients that are coming to your social media accounts that's almost how they feel it's it's a they're in a vulnerable position lying on the bed with their eyes closed for two hours it's they've got to trust the person that they're going to for the first time and that's why simply just showing your space showing where the client's going to be lying just showing your salon can really make a difference. So keep it, show, show them how clean and safe you are. Show them just the salon environment. I would uh, post pictures of good, clean work, as in stop posting blurry pictures. Make sure you've got good lighting. Make sure that it's focused when you take your pictures and then just post the pictures. Post reviews. People want to know and look into... Um, what other people are saying, they need that social proof, they need to know that other people like the work as well. Um, <laughs> and that's about as far as you need to go with it. That's about as far as your thinking needs to go. And apart from that, if you get a little bit creative, then great, but you, it's quite interesting. And this works again well for me. My most creative thoughts, moments, ideas come to me when I'm not thinking about it. If I'm trying to think, I know I've said, again, previously in this, schedule time to actually think about content. Yes, that does work. But what you'll find is you'll use that time to create something you've already thought about. Uh, separate to that, by having downtime, by creating boundaries, by sticking to your hours, by uh, working in a way that gives you time to subconsciously come, be creative. Because you're a lash artist, you are already creative. That's a, It's a creative role. It's a creative job. So... For me, if I'm at the gym, if I'm in the shower, that's when all of a sudden I'll go, that's a good idea, I'm gonna do that. So give yourself the opportunity to come up with the creative ideas, but just know that what I've just said, you can quite easily come up with almost a week's worth of content just by showing um, all of the basic stuff without having to overthink it. So yeah, I would definitely suggest that. And the last thing I would do when you have your clients for things to post, it's called UGC for short, it's user generated content. And that is basically, again, just to make it even more like in layman's terms, that is stuff your clients post. So encourage your clients to post lash selfies if they can and tag you, you can then reshare it. 
or if you happen to see one of your clients' social media posts that does, you can see their lashes, reshare it, tag them, give them the credit for it. They'll like it. Everyone loves their posts and their, their whatever they post to be shared. And then there's, there's easy content for you. Again, it's a strategy we use at Lashbase um, and so do most lash brands. Uh, people posting pictures of their work, you can share it to say, here it is. So if people are sharing pictures of your work, your lashes, reshare it on yours, whether that's in stories or whether that's um, on your feed as well, if it's again, a clean and crisp photo. So that's how you post things. If you don't have time to think about what to post, just post that at the moment. Now, moving on to the last thing that I wanna talk about, and this one uh, you might not like to hear, but it is so important. Now, you may not like being on camera, you may not like putting yourself out there. However, you may also have noticed that people that are very successful do also do that. It's It makes things, you don't have to do it, but it makes things a lot easier. And I believe that saying that you're not very good on camera, saying that it's embarrassing, you don't know what to do, um, all of that comes from something inside you that doesn't come from the actual truth of the matter. You'll never, get over that fear of what people might think. You'll never get that over that anxiety if, unless you actually do it. I promise I never liked being on camera, yet here I am, however many minutes into this presentation, um, and I regularly put myself on camera. It's become almost normal for me. Yes, I still have anxiety from time to time. Yes, I get that adrenaline rush when, it's, when I'm nervous. All of that's fine. But again, for you as a lash artist, or even a lash trainer, and you want people to see who you are and trust you, have a connection with you, to come to you and provide you with money, with business, they need to see who you are and know what you're all about. And the only way to do that is to put a camera in front of your face and start either talking to the camera, or even if it's just posting pictures of yourself to introduce yourself to your audience. So normally I say to people, look, no, don't worry, if you don't wanna go on camera, don't do it. However, I'm going to end this presentation by saying I actually think it is important. I think it is important that you show your face. I think it is important that you try and push yourself. I think it is important that you get out of your comfort zone. The thing is, you can talk to your phone on Instagram stories about a um, what you've been doing because of a recent coronavirus um, update that the government have come, come out with. Um, you can talk to the camera. The thing is, it might take you 40 attempts. You might just do it and go, don't like that. Do it, don't like it. The thing is, you don't have to post it. Whatever you do, you don't have to post it, but give it a go. Over time, you get more comfortable with it and it will change everything for your business. So I'm gonna stop saying that I don't think it's important. It is important. And I believe everyone has it in them to be able to get out of their comfort zone. And I think everyone should give it a go. So yeah, last in closing, what you should do is do it. And if you want any more advice, contact me, DM me on Instagram, at lashbase underscore Jamie. Um, if you want to send me anything, show me anything, whatever, I'll help you and I'll give you some advice on it. Uh, so yeah, main takeaways that I want to give to you for watching my presentation, schedule in the time to use social media, just as important as a client itself, themselves, sorry, itself, and figure out who your target market is so that you don't waste your time because if you spend all of that one hour focusing on impressing the wrong people, that is a waste of time. Focus that hour on the right people. And lastly, number three, make sure that your account is focused towards your clients. So that is your bio, your pictures, and what you do on social media. So. Thank you very much for watching. If you have liked this, let me know. Uh, as always, please just like screenshot that you're watching, post it onto Instagram stories and tag me at Lashface Jamie. I would really, really, really appreciate it. Um, it'd be great to know, because normally if I'm in front of like um, an audience, I'm on stage, you get feedback from what people are thinking, but it's, it's always such a strange one having to talk directly into a camera lens. I'm in an empty room right now. Um, talking to uh, my phone and you don't get that response. So uh, for me to get that, uh, I'd love to see people screenshot and put it on social media and let me know what your favorite part was or your key point or what you've taken from this or what you're gonna do next. 
um, and I'll reshare everybody that tags me in it. But I hope you enjoy the rest of the virtual Lash Conference. This has been great fun and hopefully I'll get to see everybody very soon because uh, whether I'm speaking or not, next year I will be at the next Lash Conference. Thank you everyone.